Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video I'm going to give you a complete navigation of our DaVinci Resolve color panel for loop deck devices. This is the Windows version, and this is version 2. We have made quite a few significant additions as well as a few improvements from version 1 that I think you're going to like. Now some of the things that are new in version 2 that we've added in is we now have access to the Curves pane, Color Warper, Magic Mask, Custom Keys, RGB Mixer, Blur, and Dolby Vision. They've all been added into this pack, so it's a major update. Now we're going to go through each one of the color panes and show you how you can control pretty much every parameter in the color panes inside DaVinci with your Loop Deck device. We'll be demonstrating the primary color pane, the log color pane, HDR. We'll show you how you control the parameters of curves, the color warper tool, all of the parameters inside the qualifier, power windows, tracking. We'll even get into the magic mask tool and with blur and keys. We'll touch on all the sizing controls. We'll introduce you to Dolby Vision. And then finally, I'll show you how you can actually customize your Loop Deck device to control any parameter you want, including OFX parameters. So at this point, I am assuming that you have already gone through the installation procedure. You've either gone through the PDF that's included in the pack, or you've watched the installation video. There's a little bit of setup. But the thing that is one of the biggest changes between version 1 and version 2, in version 1 you were required to go through and set the coordinates for each of the parameters before you could use them. Well, we've eliminated that in version 2 for Windows. No longer do you need to go through each parameter and set the coordinates. Okay, so at the beginning of a color session, you're going to want to load the panel. So on the main page of our color panel pack, you'll hit load panel. You'll hear a beep and the indication that the color panel is running. And you'll see in your system tray at the bottom, the red trackball icon indicates that it's running. Now there is one additional thing I want to point out, and this is a late addition that uh, we've included since we did this whole recording. And that is the addition of this reset UI button. Uh, as you followed through in the PDF and in the installation video, it's important to make sure that you reset the UI layout so everything is in place to how we've written the script. And so we've actually made it uh, even easier for you just by hitting this reset uh, UI button. So if I was to change things here, uh, just add a few things. Actually, I'll turn these off. Now this is what you should do at the beginning of every one of your color sessions, just to make sure everything's lined up properly. Press the reset UI, it resets everything in DaVinci how we need to see it. Now there are a couple things you can change if you want. You can turn off clips and operate this way, everything is fine. You can turn off timeline, everything is fine, but don't turn off both. If you turn off both, the script is not going to respond. You'll press uh, keys on the device and they're not going to work. So you have to have either clips on or timeline on or both. And uh, having the scopes here is fine, but as we also indicated uh, in the installation, uh, if I switch over here to keyframes, uh, you can see we're in a compact uh, view, not the expanded view. So if you have the expanded view on, it's also going to mess up uh, where things line up. I should also point out that you do need to be running a minimum screen resolution of 1920 by 1080. If you're using a screen resolution smaller than that, this expanded and compact view will not be adjustable. It'll always work in the expanded view, and therefore some of the headers will not line up. So please keep that in mind. You need a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 at a minimum. So you have to operate it on this um, configuration. And the quickest way to do that, if you find things aren't working, just go here, press reset UI, and it resets back to um, where things like to be. Now, quick navigation on the main page here. You have access to uh, some node controls. We can add a serial node, a parallel node, layer node, etc., that sort of thing. We can navigate the nodes, go previous, next, etc. We can select our clips with the dials along the top here. We can control the brightness of the display itself and control the button brightness 
with this dial as well. You can also control the nodes with this dial. All right, and we'll get into printer lights and the save load memory in a little while. But I want to quickly get into the color paint actions themselves. So with the Loop Deck device, you can swipe the touch screen to advance to the next or previous page. In addition, for quick access, you can hit the two key on the CT device or the one key on the live device. Now I'm going to be demonstrating this on a CT device. Everything I'm demonstrating is the same on the live device except for anything that is below the round keys, of course, because they don't exist on the live device. So anything having to do with the shuttle or the square keys obviously are not going to pertain to your live device. Everything above that works exactly the same. So as you can see on uh, our second page of the main, we have the different color panes available to us and we have a third page that are also available to us here. But we'll go back and we can use the uh, navigate the touch screens as well by using the 7 and 8 key, uh, the 6 and 7 key on the live device. So if we want to do a primary adjustment by clicking on the primary color wheels, it does two things. It opens up the primary color space on loop deck and it opens up the, color, the primary color pane in DaVinci. So one of the things that's new in version 2, we've added in, you can see on the shuttle wheel here, we've added in control for lift, gamma gain, and offset in you know, a red trackball kind of icon. Now what is different about this is you can see if you're familiar with how the shuttle wheel works, we've got this divided into uh, four quadrants here. Wherever the blue highlight is indicates that that is the function that is going to be that is currently active. So when I rotate the dial as indicated on the shuttle, I will be affecting gain. So I don't have to press any buttons. I can just start rotating the dial and my gain will start being affected. So you can see in our waveform, we're raising up gain. I can quickly just move over to lift, drop down the lift. I can hit gamma, adjust my gamma, and if I want to, I can adjust offset and bring the whole thing up or down, just by clicking on whichever parameter I want to control. Now if you have a live device, or if you choose to uh, use the dials instead, swiping the dial strip takes us through the different parameters we have available to us, and we can get to this page here. Page number two shows us that we have the same controls. So just by starting to rotate, we'll change these values. If I want to adjust the lift, you can see, and the gain. I don't have to press any buttons. These work live. Now while I'm trying to get this piece of footage into the area that I want, I can continue to work on my image. Bring the gamma down just a bit, and then I might want to also adjust saturation. So I'm going to move to my horizontal control, increase my saturation, bring some warmth back into the image, still adjust the gamma, go to the gain, bring the gain down just a little bit, rotate the hue just a little bit. You see, just by using two hands here, I can, I can very quickly dial in the look that I want. Now these dials are accessible by pressing on the dial itself and then rotating. If I want to start changing temperature, press temperature, start rotating and adjusting. Contrast, press, rotate. Swipe to a different area. I'll show you wheels in a second. We can go over to hue, start adjusting your hue. Now you see I'm adjusting the values using this dial, which works perfectly well, but we can also swipe our shuttle screen and we have the same horizontal control with the shuttle screen. And you may find that it's even more responsive than rotating just the dial. It's a bit more of a course action. Now, as always, we can reset. So I'm going to go back to my red trackball. I'm going to do a very quick adjustment to bring us 
close back to where we were. There we go. Now I'm going to demonstrate if we move over to the, the color wheels themselves, we can access these controls. We can access them through the dial strip or we can advance to the next page which presents us with the color wheels available to us. So we can, if we want to affect the color wheel gamma, we click on it there and we can adjust vertically, horizontally. If we swipe to the uh, trackball icon here, we can then select which direction we want to go. So this is top left, bottom right, bottom right, top left. This is giving us the control in the color wheel. You also have diagonal control on this page here. We can also do the diagonal control over here. And you do have the individual lift gamma gain offset master wheels available to you here as well. But you also have the individual color channels. Here's the individual blue of the offset and then we can go one page more and we have all of our lift gamma gains for the individual channels and the master. So for the green of the gamma, we can increase or decrease green in gamma, green in gain. You get the idea. In addition, the shuttle wheel also provides to us the typical jog, scroll and shuttle functions. So we can jog the footage that we're working with, click in the center, we can scroll. And of course, the shuttle command will shuttle us forwards and back. Hit the space key to stop. You also have a scroll function here on the dial strip. All right, so that's working with primary. So uh, we can quickly get back to our main page by Clicking on the two here, that gets us back to our main page, page two. And if we want to make a log adjustment, clicking on log opens up the log color pane in DaVinci and gives us much of the same controls you see in the primary room. And it's designed the same way. You have your, your wheels here, shadow midtone highlights with the offset. They all work the same way as they do in primary, but in log color space. Now going back into main and going into HDR, same principle as the primary color wheels and the log color wheels, except we have all the controls for HDR built in here. Now we can navigate, as you might be aware, there are seven color wheels available to us, but only four are visible at any time. You can navigate the different ones. Right now you can see we have the global specular highlight and light global always stays, stays on, the specular highlight and light will shift as we navigate through the color wheel navigation and you can do that by here. Now you see we're going down to the different color wheels available. And this is important when you go to uh, page two here, we don't list the color wheels as black, dark, shadow, light, highlight, etc. We list them as HDR one, two, and three, whichever one is active at any time. So currently, right now I've got black, dark, shadow, which represents with HDR one, two, and three. So clicking on any one of these, and if we go to our control here, and we start controlling, I'm affecting the black, and if I go to HDR3, I'm affecting shadow. Now if I move back over to this page and advance a couple over, you can now see when I now move back, now HDR1 is, is doing shadow, and HDR3 is now doing highlights. And the same thing is true of the exposures and the saturations, that sort of thing. These will affect whatever is currently active in DaVinci. We can also navigate the different color wheels here on the dial while we're on this page. Affect dark. I want to move over to affecting light. See, just by moving this, I don't have to click any other buttons. I can just navigate to the parameter I want to change mm -hmm. 
and just keep rotating. And we can always reset the controls in this color pane. We also have the zones available to us. They're all mapped in, so you can immediately jump to the different zones. Or we can get back to the wheels that way. And as usual, the tint, hue, they're all available to us down here. Temperature, we can make all of our adjustments here. And we can also use them with the shuttle wheel. All right, now we're gonna slip back and I'm gonna demonstrate RGB mixer that allows us control over the individual color channels. So clicking on any one of these, green output, I can raise and lower the green output of this, increase or decrease my red in the blue output, the red output, I can really start cooling off this image increase the blue in the in the blue output very very quickly change the tone of the of the image itself if we want to reset all these back to where we were and then we can also just do our red to greens green to blue etc back to the main page we can now get into curves also new in in version 2 we can get into say a hue versus hue where we can set a blue point and let's set a magenta point as well and whichever one I've got currently selected I can start adjusting select the magenta point raise it up as well so I'm adjusting the hue of the blue and magenta in this image currently If I want to select the red, bring it down, the yellow, bring it down, or raise, maybe raise that up, really make it pop out. Don't have to use the shuttle, you can also use the dial. We can go back out, we can uh, start adjusting the custom curves themselves if we choose to. We can just select green. And by selecting green here, we can just adjust the value of our green. We can lock them all together. All right, so all these controls are available. And you also have access to your soft clip. And let's go back and, so I showed you hue versus hue. Also, hue versus saturation does the same sort of thing. We can raise and lower. Let's say if we want to just take all that cyan blue out. And with the blue, raise up this part of the blue. Just changes the image a little bit. And then go into yellow. Maybe increase that yellow a little bit. So dramatically change the image very, very quickly. All right, we can reset that. And you still have hue versus luma, luma versus sat, saturation versus saturation, and saturation versus luma. These all work the same way. All right, so we'll change the image. Let's go with this image, and we'll get into the new color warper. Now, if you wanted to, you can uh, immediately hit range, and you can start selecting a range of your image, and then go into the next page. And we, can, we have all of our tools available here if you want to uh, edit directly in the Color Warper graph itself. Or you can start adjusting the image with these controls here. I'll move over to here. You can really get some control, change the hue, the saturation. I can now make this area a lot stronger, drop out the luminance. Much more subtle of an effect. I can still adjust the range even further here. I can widen the range out, close it up. A lot of control over the color, color warper here. We can also get ourselves either by pressing this dial or, or going back to our main page. We can click on our grid. We have access to either grid one or grid two. We have the tools available here. 
We can switch between grid one and grid two, what we're going to be controlling. We can select an area in the grid that we want to control and then go in and start moving our grid points around here. So the color warper is a pretty advanced feature. It'll take you a little bit of time to get used to it, but once you start integrating it with our color panel, I think you're going to find that you're going to have even a lot more control. So I'm going to go back out and I'm going to just quickly turn on my color wheels here and back out and I'm going to switch to my next image and I'm going to go into the qualifier. Now here we have tools available for us to, to begin our selection. So we can select the picker tool. We can just, I'm just going to, I'm of course using the mouse for this. I can't control this with, uh, with the loop deck. So I'm just selecting an area and I want to turn on highlights here so I can see better the area that I've kind of selected. And I can quick, uh, click on the um, picker add to add to that selection. When I'm happy with the selection I've got, I can then start controlling its color. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to go back, turn off highlights, go back over. And now I can adjust the width that I had selected, change the actual range, that sort of thing. Actually, if I go back to highlights here and then adjust that, I'm seeing a little better the area that I'm working with. There, that's, that's what I want. Now when I want to uh, adjust the color, I've got that selection made and I can then bounce out, go into a primary and I can just change the tint or swing over to my controller here. I can change the tint of that yellow I can change the hue of it to change the color as I see fit. I can bounce back into qualifier, go over and I can start increasing my softnesses. So my high and low soft so that there is more of a gradient between the two. You see how we can bounce around really quickly and adjust, I'll cancel that out. And then my luminance soft, etc. I go back out in my primaries and I can continue to adjust the color how I see fit. Probably should have shut the, uh, the highlights off there. Just go in here, shut off highlights, go back to here. And I can make the adjustments, bring that saturation down. Now we've changed that color and we can see the difference before and, before and after of what we've done. Very, very quick, especially when you're using two hands on the system to constantly rotate and switch between the different menus. All right, back to the main page. We're now going to get into power window. Let's move to next clip. Go into power window. Now in this one, I'm going to add a, let's add a, a linear. And we can control all different aspects of this power window with the loop tech itself, with the dials or the shuttle. So I can just click on aspect. I can widen this out to where I want. Tilt, I'm going to move it up. I'm going to change its size. Right, I want to change the softness. Now I'm going to go softness four to get this bottom adjusted. So now I've got check out the highlight. That's not bad. What I've got there now. Once again, I can quickly go into primaries. I can start uh, doing some boosting with this. So now I'm just affecting the top part of the image. Do the gamma as well. Bring the gamma up as well. And then I want to really bring up a lot of saturation to really change the image, maybe even adjust the hue just a little bit, a little more golden in there. If I wanted to, I can get an RGB mixer and start adjusting, get a little more gold in there. All right, so very quickly, I've been able to make a power window adjustment. All right.
Next panel over, we're going to go to the next clip we've got here and get into tracking. Now, I've already made a uh, rough a mask around uh, this person's face, and I want to track this. Simple, it's all set to go. We just hit the tracking, and DaVinci will do that for us. Of course, you can go backwards if you need to as well. You also have all your tools and check boxes that are available that you would normally use in the tracking function. All right, I'm gonna to go to the next clip and I'm gonna get into Magic Mask. Now, if you have the studio version, which I'm running right here, you have Magic Mask available to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a, um, I'm gonna scroll and just pick a better part of the image. I'm gonna use that image here. I'm just gonna take the picker and select this part of the image now I'm going to just quickly turn on highlight here. You can see that I've got a, a, a bit of a hole in this mask. So I'm going to go to clicker add and I'm just going to add this in here and it does it for me. Now that I'm happy with that masking, go back to the first page. I'm going to tell it to track it. And there we have it. And I can also go back to where I was and track backwards. So now we have the mask completely tracked for this clip. We can scroll through and double check it. That's our keyframe there. And we can move to our, our different controls and we can start to uh, affect if we had holes in this. We can take a look by hitting invert mask. Currently we don't have any holes uh, in our mat. We're, it's pretty clean so we're okay but uh, that this is where you would do it. You would um, change your, your black clip and make some adjustments. Clean up the black, etc. All these controls are available here. So that's the magic mask available to you. So we can we can move on to uh, from magic mask and go, go into blur here. If we want to do a bit of a beauty pass on this, we can get into do something like going into actually we can go into blur mist and we can start adjusting any one of these. These are locked. So we can start increasing. So we just do a bit of a blur mist, or we can, let's say, unlock. Let's say unlock that, and we can adjust individual color channels. If we go into the straight blur, and we start making the adjustments, you can see we're blurring just the green channel here we can change the radius so how much blur we're actually giving it i just want to do the green as well just get a bit of a beauty pass on it now from here as well we can go to our main page and go to the third page and we can get i'm going to jump over and just go right into key here you can see we got a key available to us we can get in and we can start making some adjustments as we as we need to with all of our key controls. Now I'm going to move one more clip over. We'll go into our third page here and we'll get into sizing. Now we have all the functions available to us for edit, input, output, node and reference sizing. They're all here and, and uh, depending on which one you're in they'll be color coded so if you're into reference sizing they've got a bit of a purple color to them and uh, input sizing has got the, the brown. We can easily do our flips. We can get in and do some tilting, change the height, you know, we'll change your aspect, move over, change our width, give some perspective, that sort of thing. We can change our pan, I'll change our size a little bit here. There you go. We can move into our uh, edit sizing where we can do some cropping if we choose. Just the bottom crop, left crop, bringing that in. All right. 
Now I'm going to go back out to the main page. I'm going to go one clip forward here and we're going to get into page three. We're going to go into custom here. Now what this is, this gives you control over any parameter that you want to assign to these keys. These are user definable. And that means any OFX plugin parameter can also be programmed to be controlled by your Loop Deck device. Now, as you can see in DaVinci, I've got Pencil Sketch uh, OFX loaded onto this clip. Let's go into FX here. Now I'm just going to position my mouse over the slider of Stroke Strength and I'm going to hold control on my keyboard while I press this C1 key. So I'm holding control, I press C1. I'm going to do the same for Smoke and Stroke Detection. Hold control on the keyboard, press C2, and do the same for Stroke Length. Hold control on the keyboard, C3. You heard the beep, indicates it has recorded that position. So let's say that I uh, want to put the pencil sketch onto this clip. Well, I load this up. You can see it automatically applies the pencil sketch, but I want to adjust some of those parameters. I press C1, I can immediately start adjusting. C2, I can start adjusting. C3, adjust my stroke length. C1, stroke strength. You can do this for any parameter that has an adjustable value in DaVinci. The beauty about this is what you just programmed there stays written in the script file. Unless you are to overwrite these C123 keys, they will always remain there. So you can come back in two months, apply a pencil sketch effect, come to custom, hit this key, and it's going to adjust that parameter. So if you use a particular effect a lot of the time and you want that control, on your Loop Deck device, this is a sure way to get it. And back to our main page, we of course have printer lights available to us, making sure printer light hotkeys are turned on. And now when I adjust the parameter, I'm adjusting my printer lights very quickly and easily. I can adjust the master here. You can do some adjustments at the same time to do a push and pull. Now we also have save load memory. Pretty obvious, we have one page of save memories and then a, a second page of load memories. Very quickly to uh, save and load all your different grade settings. All right. Now the last one I'm gonna show you is, uh, over, we'll switch over to our second page here and go over to third page. I'm gonna show you Dolby Vision. Now we have access to all the controls in Dolby Vision that is currently only available on the very high-end hardware that you can get. Well, we can control all these parameters here. Now of course you need a Dolby Vision license to access most of these functions, but if you have the studio version of DaVinci and you have a Dolby license, I think you're going to enjoy being able to access all these controls with your Loop Deck device. So first things first, we're going to uh, analyze the clip. Then we'll enable tone mapping. And then we can get over into our individual adjustments here. We can start with some lift, start using the lift. And of course we can use the shuttle wheel to bring us up even further, adjusting our gamma, bring our gamma up. Right, we have all of our controls here. We have our individual color controls. By no means am I a Dolby Vision expert. I'm <laughs> just demonstrating you that we do have control over all of these controls. And we can bounce around between all the different parameters to be able to control our image. So that's it. That's our color panel all ready to go for your color sessions. You don't need really, really expensive hardware to be able to access all these controls in DaVinci. We've written this script to allow you to get direct control over all these parameters. So I'm hoping you're gonna find this useful in your color sessions. Certainly drop us a line, let us know how it's working out for you. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.